that. Hey, you guys doing pretty good? Yeah. It's good to be here. Um, I want to, before I jump into God's Word, which we're going to do, uh, I just want to take a second to uh, acknowledge the two guys that came here and, 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 and blessed this congregation, blessed me with coming in and, and sharing God's Word, Pastor Theo and then John Abner, you know, just love those guys. I know they did a great job. I was able to watch most of their sermons and faithfully teaching the Word of God, and uh, so I'm just really, really appreciative of those guys. I hope you were as well. Um, and they'll be back. They'll be back, and uh, I've got them on the hook, man. I got them. I got them, so... They won't, they can run, but they can't hide. They're both trying to like dodge ministry, but they just, you know, I mean, should they really be? I mean, you listen to them, right? They should not be sitting at home, should they? No, they should be right here at a pulpit, right? Definitely. So uh, anyway, so, um, but let's, let's jump into God's word. Let's grab a, a copy of God's word and let's uh, turn to Acts chapter 20, please. Uh, don't just listen to me. Grab a copy of the Bible. There, you, you might have one on your phone. You might have one in front of you. Maybe you brought your own. Maybe uh, you grab one off the table or the pew back. Just please grab a copy of God's Word. We're going <clears> to <throat> study <clears throat> Acts chapter 20. And our verses this morning are going to be uh, verses 13 through 27. That's where we're going to mine uh, from God's Word. Do uh, you guys remember, like it's been a long time. We've been doing this for like a year, right? We've been studying the, the gospel of the, uh, the book of Acts for like a year. And... Uh, we're here because, we're, why do you pick up your Bible anyway, right? You pick up your Bible, why do you come to church? Because you want to learn something, right? You, wanna, you should never be content with who you are. You can be content with who God is. You can be content with who God says you are. But never be content with where you are in your walk with Him, right? Always want more. Always want to, pro- to, 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 to progress, to move forward, to grow in Christ. Let the, the fruit of the Spirit grow in you and let Him use you more, right? Be more and more useful in the kingdom of God. So that's why we open up our Bibles. So that's why we come to church every single week. And so we, we, we opened up the book of Acts like almost a year ago because we wanted to accomplish two things. And, and maybe you remember, maybe you don't, but I'll remind you. Uh, we're here because we want to learn about what uh, truth is sh- shared in Scripture, right? Uh, what do they say? If you, if, you, if you don't believe in something, you'll fall for anything, right? So we need to, we, you can't just say, hey, wh- what are you? Hey, I'm a Christian, really? Why? Yeah, do that someday. Ask, some, ask people. Hey, you a Christian? And they're going to say yes, and then you say why. And they'll go, uh, right? They don't know, right? They don't even understand what that means, right? So you have to learn. That's why we open up the Bible. That's why God's been faithful to preserve his word and pass it down to you so you understand what it is that you know, what you believe, what you know, right? That's what we need. We need that. So we're there to, to get truth shared in scripture. And then of course, examples shown, right? Example shown. What does it mean to respond to all that that is true? So you see what Luke has done is he, he wrote two books in the Bible, he wrote uh, the Gospel of Luke, and, and here's what he did. In his first book, he said, in the introduction, he said, I'm writing a careful account of the events and the truth. You know, these things that are surrounded around Jesus, the events and the truth of who Jesus is. And so he writes this Gospel, pretty long. We studied that book for a year as well. I hope you were there for that. If, you'd haven't, if you weren't here for that, you can catch it all on our YouTube channel. It's all right there. But he wrote this book so that we can know who Jesus is, and what Jesus taught, and what Jesus said, and where Jesus went, and what he expects of those who would listen to his message, right? That's what truth shared is all about. We need to know what we believe, right? You need to know. And then he follows up the Gospel of Luke with his second book, and it's called the Book of Acts, the Acts of the Apostles. It's the Book of Acts, and the Book of Acts is how a Christian should respond to who Jesus is. So his first book, he's like, this is who Jesus is. This is what he taught. This is what he said. And then he follows it up, and he says, now this is how you respond to who he is and what he said and what he taught and what he expects. This is what it looks like, right? And so we don't look at the book of Acts and go, oh, those guys are awesome. No, we say, look at those guys. They're awesome, and I should be like them. That's what the book of Acts is all about. And in our text today, you're going to see that Paul kind of brags a little bit about who he is, but it's not about bragging about who he is, because if you read on in the text, which we won't get to yet, not this week, but you're going to see that he says, hey, this is who I am, awesome, 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 and this is who you should be. That's what the book of Acts is all about. It's teaching us who we should be, you know? If Jesus truly is Lord, right, then 
fill in the blank. Right? If, if everything was truly created for him, then that would mean that I would, what? Fill in the blank, right? There should be some response, some proper response. If Jesus Christ truly is the Son of God who came down from heaven and laid himself down on a cross for you so you could be forgiven, if that's really true and you've embraced that truth as your own, then it should mean something, right? And that's why we studied the book of Acts, to see the proper response to who Jesus Christ is. So the idea here, every single time you open up the Bible... And every single time you come to church, it's to open up the text to hear what it says and let it bear its weight upon your life and therefore pushing you to greater response. That's what you're here for. Do you understand? I hope that's why you're here this morning. Don't ever be content with where you are in Christ. And that includes the person speaking to you. The very existence of the Bible, that it's even here right now in front of you, screams that you don't have the right to decide what response looks like. There's no autonomy in that. Like, listen, the particular details can be different from person to person. I get that, the little minor details, right? But when you open up the Bible and it says stuff like this, um, be holy as I am holy. How much wiggle room is in there for that? How much interpretation is that for you? No, 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 right? You open up the Bible, you find out what God is. You find out who he is, you find out what he thinks, you find out what he says, you find out what he does, and that's what you do. You don't get to decide whether, well, you know what, I like that portion, I like that portion, but I'm going to throw out that part. He said, be holy as I am holy. Boom, that's it, that's what you do, right? When Jesus said, this is what I pray for you guys, that you will be one just as I and the Father are one, right? What does that mean? That means you don't get to say, well, I don't like the way you do it at your church, so you go over there and do it. I do it the way Jesus said to do it. Jesus said, me and the Father are one. Right? We think alike. We say things alike. We go the same places. We do the same things. We have the same motivation, the same perspective. Right? That's the way we're supposed to be. And there's not, how much wiggle room is in that? How much room is there to argue about what you do at your church and what I do at my church? Be one as the Father and I are one. Listen, how about this one? Love each other as I have loved you. Any wiggle room in that one? So what do we do? We open up the scripture and we see how he laid his life down for his church. The church that, let's just say what it really is, that sucks half the time, that that sins against him constantly, completely disobeys him, but he lays his life down for us, right? So why can't we do the same thing for other people? He said to love each other as I have loved you. How much wiggle room is in there? Show me how much. None, right? So, and and, and here, let's just follow that same trail. When he says, husbands, love your wife as Christ loved the church and lay your life down for her. What does that mean? I get to decide that on Tuesdays and Thursdays I will, but on the other days, they're my days. I get to go play golf. Does that work? Lay your life down for your wife means what? Lay your life down for your wife, right? You don't get to choose. There's no autonomy in that, right? So we approach the text of Scripture, whether it's at home by yourself or here every single Sunday morning. You approach it with humility. And you say in your spirit, what I hear is what I need to do, so help me God. Right? That's what you do. Every single time you open up the Bible. And I hope that you'll say that right now as we get ready to read this text here this morning. You ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? Okay. Where are you going? You're leaving us? All right. I mean, I scare people away all the time, but that was quick. <clears throat> Man, if I scare guy away, we got problems around here because it doesn't make any difference what I do. He's still here. <laughs> yay, God. Yay, God. Yay, God. Yay, yay. All right. Let's go. You ready? Uh, Acts chapter 20, <clears throat> starting in verse 13. Uh, Paul went by land to, I, okay, let me just, okay, disclaimer, disclaimer, I, I'm not the smartest guy in the world, so when I pronounce the names of these cities and, and islands and stuff, don't throw your Greek scholar Koinonia Greek at me and say, that's not it, because I don't care, okay? Paul went by land to Asos, 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 applesauce, where he had arranged for us to join him while we traveled by ship. I love how a good pastor makes sure that his people get the best end of the deal and he gets the worst end. It's pretty cool. I mean, seriously, that's leadership right there, right? 
I'm going to walk. You guys, you guys get the good seat. That's pretty cool. It's one in every group. <clears throat> he joined us there, and we sailed together to Mytilene. How's that? Pretty good. The next day, we sailed past the island of, I'm going to say chaos because it's more fun. It describes his life better. Chaos. 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 The following day, we crossed to the island of Samos, and a day later, we arrived at Miletus. I think there's a slide up in there. Don't I have a slide in the, in the background thing that has the map of the whole area? Isn't there, a, is there, did I put it in there? No, 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 on the little computer. Isn't there a map up there somewhere? Yeah, look, so in case you don't have a map in your hand, so we got this for you. We love you here, right? <clears throat> so he was, up, he was up top there. I'm not going to reach up there. But you see where he comes? You see the names of the cities, Asos and, 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 and Mytilene. And right, he's coming down and same also. He's coming down the coast here, right, uh, of this area that was the region of Asia where his faithful preaching meant that, you remember that? A couple months ago I said that his preaching, <clears throat> it reached the ears of every single person there, faithful. Remember the 300 plus days that he preached at the lecture hall of Tyrannus, and as a result, every person in the region of Asia heard the word of the Lord? Awesome, awesome, right? So you see him going down the coast. <clears throat> so it says, he goes from place to place, verse 16, Paul had decided to, to sail on past Ephesus. You, man, you put that back up. <clears throat> okay, so where's, uh, where's Ephesus? You see it right there? So he's coming down the coast, and he's, he's thinking, i got to get past here, Ephesus. Why? Because, you can see it in the text, the reason why is because he was hurrying to get to Jerusalem, if possible, in the t for the time uh, of the festival of Pentecost. So his desire, even though he's evangelizing, he's going around and spreading the word of God. You can, you can kill all this. He's, he's decided, I'm going to go back past that and get over here to, to Jerusalem by a boat because I need to celebrate Pentecost, right? He's, he's got to go, 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 go. <clears throat> so he's on his way, and it says in verse 17, But when we landed in Miletus, he sent a message to the elders of the church at Ephesus, asking them to come and meet him. So he pauses. Even though he wants to go here, right, he understands that his task at hand, like he's, he, God's telling him what to do, and he's just got to do it. Like, I got a plan, right? Anybody have a plan? I've had plans. How many of them come true? Hardly ever. Right? That's just the way it works. So he's got a plan. He's going to get to, and it's a good plan, right? He's going to go celebrate this annual festival that God said for his people to celebrate forever. Like he understands. I'm going, I'm going, I'm going. That's my plan. But, but obviously the Holy Spirit interrupted that and he's got to do something else. And so he, when he lands over there at Miletus, he stops and he sends a message to the elders of the church at Ephesus asking them to come meet him, right? Uh, now think about that for a second, right? He doesn't get, there's no such thing as email back then. There's no such thing as, as is even snail mail like we have now, which is forever. No P UPS, no FedEx, no email, right? You can't just message him on Facebook. He sends a message. So can you bring the map back up for a second? Bring the map back up, right? Come on, bring the map back up. Where's my Miletus? Where is it? I can't see it. Where is it? Do you find it? Do you find it? Is it right here, right? So he goes past here and he stops and he says, hold on. I got to talk to these guys because this church had gotten planted, right? And then he had some, they had some issues. He's always going back. He loves his people. He's not going to leave them alone. So he just says, I'm, I'm moving on. I've got a task. I got to get somewhere. God wants me to go. But pause. And he sends a message. Now, like this isn't too far, but just imagine how long it takes to send a message. It's not like a, it's not an email, right? It doesn't just boop at your phone beeps up, right? It's time. So he stops. I got a plan, but God interrupted my plan. Anyone know what I'm talking about? Yeah. All the time. <clears throat> when they arrived, when the people arrived, this is what he says, okay? You know that from the day that I set foot in the province of, you can kill the map, province of Asia until now, I have done the Lord's work humbly and with many tears. I've endured the trials that came to me from the plot of the Jews. I never shrank back from telling you what you needed to hear, either publicly or in your homes, I have had one message for Jews and Greeks alike, the necessity of repenting from sin and turning to God and of having faith in our Lord Jesus. And now I am bound by the Spirit to go to Jerusalem. 
I don't know what awaits me, except that the Holy Spirit tells me in city after city that jail and suffering lie ahead. You know, he's going from city to city. You see it in the story. And he's, as he's saying, like, I don't know a whole lot, but I know this, that every single one of those stops that I take right here, right, every single one of them, the Holy Spirit's got one message for me. You've got problems. That's the message. And we all think that when we become a Christian, it's going to get better, right? Well, it might. It all depends on what your perspective on what better means. See, it's easy. in church, that's what the pastor does. He baits you into answering things that he knows you're going to say. And when I say you think it's going to get better, everyone's going to say the same thing. Oh, no, it's not. But no, no, yes, it is. Yes, it is. It all depends on what you think better is. You see, that's the problem. We all think better means easier. We equate the two, right? They're not the same. Better is better. Easier is easier. Don't confuse it, okay? It's going to get really, really hard. But that could be good. Remember when they're in the jail for, for being beaten, for testifying about Jesus? What do they do? See, they don't go, oh, this, this is terrible, this is terrible. You know what they do? They start singing hymns and said, we, we can't believe that we, we find it a joy to be, to be accused of, of suffering for his name. Right? Was that easy? No. But was it good? Well, obviously they're singing. Woo! I got whipped and beaten for being a Christian. Woo! You, know, you, might think easy, you might think better and crazy are the same, but easy and better are not always the same. Okay? So we've got to change your perspective, and that's why we open up the Word of God to change who we are by changing the way we think. <clears throat> so he says, um, in every city, the jail and suffering lie ahead. Someone say, woohoo! Yeah, really enthusiastic, yeah. But my life is worth nothing to me unless I use it for finishing the work assigned to me by the Lord Jesus, the work of telling others the good news about the wonderful grace of God. And now I know that none of you with whom I have preached the kingdom will ever see me again. I declare today that I have been faithful. If anyone suffers eternal death, it's not my fault. For I didn't shrink from declaring all that God wants you to know. Now, when you read all that, I don't know what jumps off the page to you, but what jumps off the page to me is this one word. It's actually not even on the page, but it's, I glean it from it. And it's the word urgency. Urgency. Urgency, right? You see him going from place to place to place to place, right? One day here, the next day there, the next day there, the next day there, right? See, this is the whole problem. In our world, in our, con- in our country right here, we're taught about lifestyle evangelism. And we take it easy. And, and here's what we do. This is what you do, man. You make friends with people, right? And you take them to the ball game and you invite their kids over to your baseball game with your kids and you have barbecue and you get to know them and, 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 and go fishing with them and go boating with them and hang out and play golf. And, and they're your neighbor and you be friends. And then maybe after a couple of years, you've earned the right to speak into their life because now, you're, now they know that you care, right? Now they know that you care. And so it's this lifestyle evangelism. Someone once said, hey, listen, uh, preach the gospel all the time, and, and if necessary, use words. You ever hear that one? I've heard that way too many times. You know what? It's not true. The Bible says that faith comes from what? Hearing the word of God. Hearing the word of God. You have to open your mouth and say something, right? urgency. You see, he's going from island to island. He's not stopping there to make friends and have cookouts, and eventually, someday, I'll get the right to speak into your life. He's like, no, they're going to die, and I need to make sure that they know what I know. They don't need to see how nice I am. They need to know the good news of Jesus so they don't perish and, and go into hell forever. That's, I need to, you see him going, 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 and so this is the reason why this is on the screen. It's not a mistake. They didn't cue it up wrong. Every single day in America, 7,500 people die. That's one every 12 seconds. From the time I started this video, nine people have died. Nine people have died. And how many of those nine people have passed into a, a Christless eternity right now in a real place called hell? where there's torment forever and the full wrath of God upon the sinner for all that he has done is being poured out on, that per- on those people right now. And how many of them have passed into eternity and they, 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 they didn't know that there was a way out. But you did. But you did. And you said nothing. 
How many of them have passed into eternity, now 12 since this video started, have died? And how many of them don't know Christ? Urgent, urgent, they need to know the truth. And you know the truth. And it should bother you that you know the truth. That you're so awful when you look at your own sin and realize, like Paul, I am the worst of sinners, yet I've been given the grace of God. Someone opened up their mouth to me, and I know. And I'm not as good as those people, but somehow they don't have it, but I do. You have to open up your mouth. And this reality that you see before your eyes, this reality compelled Paul to sacrifice to commitment, right, to go and be obedient, to action. And this same reality should press you to be not a hearer, not a seer, but a doer. Say something. Say something. People need to know what you know. You understand? You get nothing else. Say something to somebody. They're going to die. Everyone's going to die. Everyone's going to die. This morning, I, I, I feel crappy. I don't know if it's the carbs or if, I was telling my wife, you know, I don't make, want to make light of it, but I've had this, this is so terrible and you can, you can shun me for all you want. I don't care. I've had this feeling for the last year or so that I'm just like ate up with cancer. There's something wrong with me. Like I feel it in my body. I don't know what's going on with me. I don't, I'm too stubborn to get it checked out. So if I die, it's cool. I don't care. I know where I'm going, right? You don't need to evangelize me. I'm good, Okay. So it's either I start eating carbs and I feel like crap or I'm tore up inside. I don't know what it is, but my back hurts, my hips hurt, my head hurts. I feel like crap. All that to say, I'm going to die and so are you. And every single person on this earth is going to die. And every single year, just in this, co- in this country, every single day, 7,500 people will pass into eternity. And how do we know if they know Christ? We don't. And it needs to compel you finally to do something. Please don't leave it in the hands of your preachers. Don't, le- don't leave it in the hands of your worship leaders, your Sunday school teachers, your small group teachers. We're a holy nation of priests. You are, a, you are a priest of Almighty God. You're the go-between. They don't need you, but they need you to bring God and them together because they don't know who he is. And he's given you the gift, the treasure of the gospel. And he's pleading with you through my voice today. Tell someone about it. Tell someone about it, okay? Let's move on. I know that's heavy, it's morbid, it's terrible, whatever, but let it motivate you, man. Let it motivate you. I want to motivate you. I want God's word to motivate you, motivate you to do something. Now, look, let's look at what, 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 what he says here. So Paul's traveling on. This is what he says. Gather, gathers up the leaders. Now, you're going to see it. He's gathering up the leaders to not tell them how awesome he is, but it's so that they'll do the same. And look what he says. He says, I declare... I love that word, declare. I took a moment as I'm studying to just look up what declare is, right? It's to say something boldly for clarification. Like, it's a fit, this is the official answer right here, right? This is the official answer, clarification. I'm saying this emphatically that from the day I stepped foot into Asia until now. So I don't even know how long that was. But whatever the period is, he said, from the moment I got there, From that day till right now, months, six months, year, two years, anyone know? I don't. But whatever it was, he said, and remember this, in the ancient text, there's no no punctuation. So look at, look at, he says, from the day I got to Asia till today, till right now, I've done the work of the Lord. Now forget for a second what he's done, how he's done it, but forget, he's going to tell us how he did it. But for the moment, just think about this. From the moment I got there till right now, I did the work of the Lord. That should be your testimony. That's why we study the book of Acts. Not to say, well, that guy's cool. From the day you did this till today, you should do the work of the Lord. And I can tell you this, when you did that, like me, I did that. How much did you know about Jesus on that day? Nothing. I still don't. But from the day till today, do the work of the Lord. You have a testimony, right? Something sucked you down to your knees that day, wasn't it? I don't know what it was. Do you remember what it was? Do you? 
Uh huh. What was it? You don't want to do that, do you? I put you on the spot. It's the first time I've seen her in a year, right? Let's hammer this lady right here, right now. Yeah. And all of a sudden you realize, what the heck am I doing, right? Yeah. Right. Brought you right to your face, right? How much did you know about Jesus at that moment other than I can't do drugs anymore, right? That's what you knew. Did you know much more about that? Did you have a seminary degree at that day? No. No. But, 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 right, but, but you know something, right? This is who I was. This is who he is. This is who I am now. That's a story, right? That'll preach, won't it? So he says, from that moment to today, that's what I did. I did the work of the Lord. But now look what he says. I did it humbly and with not, not with tears, with what? Many tears, right? Not, like every once in a while you have a, a good cry. Everybody have a good cry. Or I've had a couple of them today already, right? But, but, but look what he says. He doesn't say tears. He said, many tears, right? Many tears. Like this, what struck me as funny about this, of this description of who he was and how he did his work, is, you know, this, is the, this is the Apostle Paul, right? He's known as Paul. He's the Apostle Paul. And then some people will say he's what? The great Apostle Paul, right? The great Apostle Paul. And what struck me, it might not struck you, but it struck me is that the thing that made him so great to me, it's not the miracle so much. It's the humility, right? It's the humility. It's the endurance. It's the perseverance. It's, 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 the, it's the faithfulness. It's the sacrifice, right? It's the sacrifice that he puts forth, right? No matter what happens, right? No matter what happens around me, God's call and the, and the eternal life of other people it's more important than me. That's what's amazing to me about Paul. In Philippians chapter 2, this is what Paul says. He says, to be humble. Now you can't, listen, you can't preach humility unless you are. Because otherwise nobody wants to listen to you. But he was super humble. Right? He was super humble. I mean, you see it all the time. He's willing to sacrifice his life, lay it down. You know what he once told God? Paul told God that I would, I'd be willing to be forever cursed. I will go to hell if they would get saved. Can you imagine that? He said, I would go to hell if my people would turn and say yes to you. That's humility, right? It's amazing. He said be, in Philippians 2, he says, be humble. Think of, uh, of others as better than yourself. Don't look at don't look out only for your own interests, but take interest in others as well. Now, you know, a lot of us have this false view of humility. Let me tell you something. Humility doesn't mean you suck. Humility means you're second. That's it. Because look, look what he says. He says, be humble. Not, don't think about yourself like you're nothing. What does he say? Be humble, and here's what the definition of humility is. He tells us to think of others as better than yourself. That's cool. Don't look out only for your own interests, you see, but also the interests of others. So it's not, hey, you suck, man, and they're way better than you. He said, no, your, your interests are important. You're someone to me. I love you. What's up, brother? I... <clears throat> you're something to me, but you're not the most important thing. You, you're supposed to put others above yourself. That doesn't mean that you're worthless. You're, you're, God loves you, man. You're valuable to him. You're created in his image to be like him. He went to the cross to pay for you. Amen. Right? You understand, right? That, that, that's what real love is. That, that, he, that God sends his son to die for you while you are a sinner. Right? He loves you. You have value, right? But don't let that value mess with you. What's up? <clears throat> don't let that value mess with you and make you think you're all that because you're not. Right? So what we need to do is we need to have the, the... Look, this is what he says. He follows up. He goes, this is the same attitude that Christ Jesus had. If Jesus is humble... Can we think that humility means that I suck and everyone else is awesome? Because Jesus wouldn't, right? We can't say that about Jesus. 
he definitely don't suck, right? He, he, like, he, he's God in flesh. Like, he is the most important person ever. But yeah, and, 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 and like what Carl was sharing this morning, doesn't Jesus know who he is? He knows who he is. It's no mistake, right? He even said it. I and the Father are one. You've seen me. You've seen the Father, right? He knew he was God. But even though he knew he was God, he's willing to lay his life down for a worthless, wretched sinner. What does that make you? Very important. Do you understand? So, so Jesus Christ is that. That's the, so this was the same example, the same attitude that Christ had. He was humble. He thought of you more important than he thought of himself. Willing to, 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 to suffer, to be stripped down naked publicly, spit on, slapped, pierced, stabbed, and killed. Right? Willing to do that even though he's absolutely way better than us. But considering you more important than himself, I'm willing. Right? That's humility. That's humility. So we're supposed to have the same attitude as Christ. So that's what humility looks like. Then he says, and I, and I did the work of the Lord from the day I got there till right now. Consistently, never stopping with humility, sacrifice, endurance, faithfulness, and many tears. Many tears. And, and I'm not the Apostle Paul, but I can get a glimpse into his life, into his reality. Because I understand how he feels. You know, people, he's going around, he's sharing the gospel, right? You saw it on the map, boom, 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 sharing the gospel, sharing the gospel. And I've been doing the same thing for years and years now, 11, 12 years. Been sharing the gospel, sharing God's word. And, and consistently, more consistently than I'd like to say, but people reject the truth. And people who are even here all the time, they come in, they come in, they come in there weeks and months and years. And they just disobey and they stubbornly refuse to obey the righteous road over and over and over again. They worship when it's convenient. They serve when there's nothing else scheduled. They, they pray, prayer life is totally neglected. Grudges are held. Honors withheld. Submission and, and obedience to God's word that would bring blessing flowing into their life is completely rejected for the same sewage that they've been living in. Many tears. And I've had those. So I understand how it is for Paul. I understand that because you, you know, this is what happens. I love the Bible and I love God. But here's one of the tortures of being a pastor is that you, you spend more time in this than most people do. Like I get all that because that's my job. So you read this, right? And you, and, and, and you see what you're supposed to do. And then we've all, who's tasted the goodness of God? We sang it. A little bit. You've had some stuff happen, right? Who else has had some good stuff happen in life? You've, you've tasted it. You know. And listen, how many times have you come to church and say, man, I wish I never came that day? Did you ever say that? Well, you walk out and you go, man, that was good. That felt good. That felt good, right? And, you like, and, and then did you ever pick up your Bible in the morning and then put it down and go, damn it, I wish I never read that thing. <laughs> no, you feel good about it, right? But you stubbornly say no to it every single day. Peck it on the ground like a chicken when God wants to give you so much more. That's what we do. Tears from the pastor. And, and you read this, right? And you, and you see what it should be. And you know that it's right and true and good. And then you've experienced the goodness of God, right? And then you go to the people and they just like, no. No, I don't want it. Heisman, you know? Done. I don't want it. Only this close and no further. And, and it brings, like he had tears. And I, man, I've, I feel it. I feel what he feels. But it's the sad state of the human race. It's just the way people are. And it's hard to deal with. And, I, I, you know, I, I don't like it. I don't want to deal with it. But So the author of Hebrews would put it this way. He said people will treat the blood of the covenant as if it were common and unholy. That's, what, that's all, everything I just said to you about pushing it away, no big deal. I know what it says, but I'm just not going to do it. That's treating it as common and unholy. That means, yeah, yeah, I know you were tortured for me. I know you poured out your blood to save me. And I know I, I get the mercy of God upon me that all that I've offered you, God, should send me straight to hell for all eternity. But yet instead, you went down there so that I didn't have to. That's crazy, right? And yet, you know this to be true, 
and you completely disobey all the time. I only ask you why. I don't know. That's treating the blood of the covenant as common and unholy. Like, it's no big deal. It's a big deal. It's a super, is there anything else that's a bigger deal than that? Just tell me what it is, because I'd like to join that church. Because I don't know of anything that's bigger than that. <clears throat> so he goes and he says, so I've, I declare today that I have worked humbly and with many tears, like consistently, from the day I got there until now. Right? Even when it's hard. Even when it hurts. Even when the people refuse to listen and obey. Even when they wanted to kill me. Look at verse 20. I never shrank back from telling you what you needed to hear. Either publicly or in your homes. And when, listen, when, when, when it's hard to be a Christian, to like literally obey what this says to do, it's easy to shrink back. It's easy to shrink back. You know, I, my, my parents don't like to hear this stuff. Maybe I'll, my, it offends my friend. I've gone to church like four weeks in a row. Like, it, you know, I just need a... I never shrank back. Like no matter what happened, and this is just right on the heels of, of him talking about how the Jews were trying to kill him. Do you, understand, do you guys understand that? Like because he was faithful the way you're seeing here, People didn't like it. They were trying to kill him. Like, not a, not a minor thing. Not like, oh, this is inconvenient because someone gave me tickets to SeaWorld and they expire on Monday. So I'm going to blow it off and I'm going to go. No, this is, if you go to SeaWorld, I'll kill you. Right? We don't get that. But, but Paul's saying, listen, even when it's brutally difficult... I never shrank back. See, that's the difference between easy and better, right? Like we said earlier. To, 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 to Paul, right, to live is Christ, to die is actually better, right? right? That, that's the difference between easy and better, is to live is Christ, to die is gain, right? So it's a change in perspective of what good is. And to Paul, if you kill me for being a Christian, if you kill me for, for proclaiming the gospel, awesome, right? Awesome. I get to go, what, what's Jesus going to say when you show up with your, with your bullet hole because you preached? What's he going to say to that? That a boy, woo, right? Not the guy, oh, you blew off church like every single week and then someone ran you over with a car? Yeah, welcome. <laughs> <laughs> But like you got to pause for a second, and I, and I think it's healthy to do not to like lighten the. Ed I don't want to. I don't want to smooth off the edge to this because it's important. And it's true. But let's pause for a second and just say none of us, including me, could declare right this about ourselves. I can't. There's no way I can. I've been completely unfaithful to the Lord. Completely unfaithful. So I can't declare to you, hey, I declare to you today that from the moment we planted SNL Church 12 years ago, I've been faithful. Not the truth at all. There were days I wanted to quit and run out of here. I remember one day at our old building in Eustis. You were probably there up there playing. I was so stinking done. And if it wasn't for the grace of God poured out through Kelly Taylor, you guys remember Kelly, some of you remember Kelly, and he took me aside, he said, come here, come on. And he took me underneath the steps and he prayed over me and, and rubbed my shoulders like, like a Rocky movie with Mickey, come on man, come on. And he said, get back in the game. But I was out of there, dude, I couldn't take it anymore. But that's not Paul, that's not Paul. He might not have stayed in one city forever. But he never quit preaching the gospel, no matter where he went, no matter what happens, right? But even though we can't declare that of ourselves, can't we at least say, I want to get better? I want to do better. I want to serve more faithfully. I want to I wanna speak it out more faithfully. 12 seconds. Every 12 seconds. 
someone's going to die. And they're either going to go, and people think sometimes, some people think you go instantly to Christ and heaven. Some people say you sleep. We can argue about that. But I know what the other option is. You get to choose which one you want. And every 12 seconds, people don't get to choose anymore. <clears throat> and so you're in the body of Christ, and specifically you're here at this church, and so whatever your ministry is, whatever you're supposed to do here, that's going to vary, right? Not everybody has a big old mouth like me, and I understand that. And so your ministry is going to be a little bit different than mine. And so response to this today is going to look a little bit different in the small details. But at the end of the day, if you truly have accepted Jesus Christ as the Lord of your life, if you truly understand who he is, and you truly understand what he's called you to do, then response can't be completely autonomous. It can't be independent. You can't be an independent thinker when it comes to that. You don't get to choose exactly what's, what that's going to look like. Okay? There are some gray areas, there's some freedom in the gospel that allows you to do different things in different ways according to the personality that he's made you. Right? We're all different. But if you really are a Christian, then proper response, real response, must not only just include, I got something in my eye, not only just include what I'm about to share with you, but it must be the absolute apex, and it must be visited and visited often, and you'll see it right there in verse uh, 21. I have had one message for Jews and Greeks alike. You know what that means? Every, pe every person. Back then there was Jews, and then there was other. Today there's us or everyone else. You're either a Christian or you're not, right? That's just the way it is. So let's just, I don't, I'm not at liberty to change God's word, but just for our, our, our conversation here, it's either you're, you're part of God's family or you're not, right? And, and Paul's like, listen, to the ones that were in, in, in God's family and to the ones who were not, and it'll be the same today, those who are in God's family and those who are not, Here's the one message for all of them. The necessity of repenting from sin and turning to God and having faith in Jesus Christ. Amen. That's the message, right? That's the message. And so, <laughs> like Peter had the same message too, right? When the, when the church first started, Pentecost, tongues, of, tongues, tongues from the Spirit come down, drop on them, speaking in tongues, right? And everyone's like, whoa, what's going on? The building's shaking, the wind is blowing. Everyone thinks they're hammer drunk. And Peter's like, no, 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 no. And he preaches the gospel, right? And then they're like, well, what are we supposed to do? And he preaches the same exact message that Paul just said. What does he say? What do we do, brothers? Repent of your sin and turn to God and be baptized in the name of Jesus, it's almost the exact same message, right? It really is the same exact message. And so listen, so you, you have a big Bible, and, and, and I do too, and in that Bible there's all these stories and characters and topics, and, and, and you need them all, right? Say, I need them all. I need them all. And I need to preach them all, right? But at the end of the day, no matter what we preach, time and time again, how often must we get back to the one message that really matters? Repent of your sin and turn to God and have faith in Jesus Christ. Everyone needs to hear it all the time. Every single person, right? Repent and turn. It's not a one-time fix-all. It's an all-time fix-all. Every single day. Listen, so if you've never really truly done this, the Bible says that today is the day of salvation. That like if you hear his voice talking to you today, it says also, don't harden your heart. Don't say, no! I know it's right, but I don't want it, right? Because that truck might be coming. You don't know. So if you've never said yes, you say yes. You say yes now, right? You say yes, and this is what you do. You repent of your sin. That means I acknowledge my sin, it's wrong, I apologize, and turn to God, and I don't want to do it anymore. I'm done with that. What I used to love, now I hate it, right? What I used to lust after, now it sickens me. I'm done with that, 
right? That's what turning to God really looks like. And then you trust not only, not only in Christ, but you, when you trust in Christ, what, you know what else you're doing? You're getting rid of trust in everything else. You're dumping trust in all other things. Like I don't care about myself, my wit, my looks, my strength, my, my, my creativity, my money, my house, my wife, my husband, my kids, my family, my church. Nothing matters. I trust in Christ and Christ alone. Just him. That's it. That's what real faith is, right? And listen, but you, maybe you did that. Maybe you did that. Maybe you did that. I hope you all did. I think I know most of you. I know everybody just about, right? And I think that you did. But, 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 but listen. That might have been a long time ago, and between that day and now, like Paul, from the day I was there till today, right? Well, since the day you said yes, and you repented and, and poured your tears out on an altar somewhere, maybe since then, you stopped walking in obedience. Because, because response is not autonomous. Response is according to what his word says. Proper response. So as you read the word and you realize, I'm not doing what it says, then the message for Jew and Gentile alike, for believer and, no, and non-believer, is the same repent of your sin just say i'm done with that right you stepped in here today so you could do that to say i'm done with that and i'm turning to god and embracing jesus christ not only for my salvation but as my lord i will follow you from this day forward right your past requires repentance but your present requires faithfulness He wants you to be faithful to share the word of the Lord with people. They need to hear this. They don't need you to be their buddy. They don't need you to be their life coach. They really don't need you to be their husband or wife or mother or father. What they really need is to have eternity in mind and go, I need you to know that you're a sinner and you need to repent and turn to God. That's what they need, right? And then after you tell them that, if they still Well, listen, then you can take them out to lunch. They need to hear the message of repentance and faith. Now, just walking along here, I want to jump a few verses, but we're going to get back to it today. I'm not going to skip it. I'm not going to miss anything here. It's too good. But I want to jump to verse 25 for a second here. And I want you to see something. 25 through 27, look what it says. And now I know that none of you whom I have preached the kingdom will ever see me again. Like he understood that his life was quickly fading away. I mean, you go from city to city and you get what he got. You kind of start figuring it out quickly. Like, I'm going down. At some point, you know, my luck's running out, man. (laughs) I'm going down. He says, so he says, uh, those that I've preached the kingdom to, that you'll never see me again. But here he is, another declaration. Sure. Official. Clear. This is my official statement. I declare today that I have been faithful. That could be your testimony, loved ones. If anyone suffers eternal death, it's not my fault. For I didn't shrink from declaring all that God wants you to know. <clears throat> it's kind of an interesting section here. He's saying something that we kind of, he's reminding us of something that we all kind of know. We all know that we're supposed to be faithful. Like no one in this room, like you're hearing me going, oh, I didn't know I was supposed to tell people about Jesus. Like you all know that, right? But, even though you know it, your laziness and your selfishness, me too, rules my life. Don't leave me hanging up here, right? So you don't open your mouth, you stubborn, lazy things. Welcome to revolution. Pleasure. We all know this. And wouldn't it be great to be, to be Paul? To go, listen. If you die and go to hell, it ain't on me. That's on you. I've said this often. People don't like when I say it, but I say it. If I'm going to go to hell, I want it to be my fault. (laughs) Let it be that someone who's a faithful gospel proclaimer came to me and told me what I needed to hear, and I told them to beat it. If, If I go to hell for that, that's cool. 
That's my fault. But loved ones, I know that everyone gets to make their own decision. But hear me when I say, and understand, don't let people go to hell because of you. Do, you. do you understand what I mean by that? You don't make the decision for them. But heaven forbid someone every 12 seconds goes to hell because you didn't open your face. I went 34 years as a white, spoiled kid in the suburbs. In 34 years, not one person opened their mouth to me about the gospel. That is sickening. That is sickening. How many Christians are there in our country? Lots. That's a good number. So I'll pick on you just because just you're here. None of you said anything to me. Do I not matter? Do I not, do, do I not count, right? Of course I do, right? And so do you, Marie. And so do you, Guy. Right? Go right along. The, Nancy does. We all do, right? All, everyone matters. Christ didn't come to the, go to the cross just for me. No, he went for you. But you matter, right? If you matter to him, shouldn't I open my mouth? To every 12 seconds. Boom. 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 Someone's going to die. Heaven forbid they go into a Christless eternity. Feeling the, wrath, the full wrath of God. Because you said nothing. Don't let people go to hell on your watch. Be motivated this morning. So we can see here in the text, of course, that faithfulness to live out and proclaim the gospel was required of Paul. We see that for sure. He had to be faithful. He knew he needed to be faithful. But now let's go back to the verses I said we'd get to. I don't want to miss them. Look at verse 22. And now I am bound by the Spirit. Like, <laughs> he's not saying, you know, I think the Holy Spirit kind of wants me to do this. Being bound by the Spirit is an act of your will. Do you understand that? It says in the Scripture that whatever you choose to obey becomes your master. So, so the Holy Spirit isn't going, no, you're coming with me, and I don't care what you say, you're coming. That's not the way... God works. Doulos means slave of your will. That means, Joe, I want you to go to Jerusalem. And you say, I have no choice but to say yes. I choose to be a slave of Christ. That's what this says. I am bound. Was he bound? Listen, just, just regular talk here between regular folks and friends. Was he bound by the Spirit? Did he have to go? No. How many people in here right now know that you're supposed to support missionaries and evangelize and bring your offering to the storehouse and pray for people? And how many people, let's just get it really, really down to the nitty gritty because this is where we like to lose people. How many people know in this room that you're supposed to be here on Monday night to pray? Everyone. But you don't. I'm not, this is not to condemn you, right? It's not. It's just to convict. Like, these, are just the, these are the things we know, but we just won't do them. And that's why every 12 seconds, people go into a Christless eternity. Because we just won't obey. We just won't obey. Aren't you guys glad that I came back? <laughs> oh, my goodness. So, <laughs> I love you. So he says, I'm bound by the Spirit to go to Jerusalem. I don't know what awaits me. I'm called to be faithful, and I don't know what awaits me except this one thing. Uh, God's telling me that in every city that jail and suffering lie ahead. <laughs> That's awesome. So he's like, you're called to be faithful even though it's going to be hard. Even though this is going to require more humility, it's going to be a result in more tears. But, but, right? You see it right there. What's the next, what's the word in the next verse? What is it? But. It's going to be really brutal. Jail and suffering. Humility and tears. It's going to be brutal. But, here's more motivation. But my life is worth nothing to me unless I use it for finishing the work assigned to me by the Lord Jesus. That's an amen, but we need to know, like we said earlier, we're reading this because we want to know the truth shared, right? We want to learn some things before we act on things. We need to know what they are. 
And the, and the Bible is so very helpful here. Because I want to finish the work assigned to me, but I don't really know what that is. And so God is so good. Look what he says. Here it is. Here's what the work is. The work of telling others the good news of the wonderful grace of God. The, so he's like, my, it doesn't make any difference what else I could, I, could, I could support the missionaries. And I could come to church every day that the doors are open. And I could, I could, I could serve at the, el, at the elderly home. And I could serve at the, at the bread line. And I could serve at the homeless shelters. And I could, whatever, what, all of that, right? All of it. But my life is worth nothing unless I share the gospel with people. Amen. Nothing. Nothing. What's it worth? Nothing. Unless you do that, right? Unless you do that. You know, I just have this feeling, this thing inside of me right now that just says that God would be very pleased with you if you drop all the other stuff and do that. If you would do that, including all the awesome ministry stuff that you think you need, like, all that stuff's awesome. You can do the Christmas thing, right? It's good stuff, isn't it? We're going to talk about that in a minute. But don't forsake evangelizing the world with the gospel to do anything else. Because that's the most important thing, right? That, those are the eternal things, right? Whether you eat today or not means nothing, right? Where someone who every 12 seconds will die, where they'll spend the next million years that's the most important thing so don't neglect that one thing okay and so i love this you, there's one word in there that really stood out to me it was the word finishing finishing anyone ever share the gospel with somebody raise your hand if you've shared the gospel with anyone in your whole life okay pretty much everybody right it's awesome but he says that that, that sharing the gospel, you have to finish the work, right? Okay, so awesome that you did it, do it more, right? The work of, of the good news, the work of the kingdom is to finish the work that he's given you, right? Not, don't, that's awesome you did it once, I hope there was fruit out of that, but like don't say, hey, I did my part. No, you didn't. Your part is to finish the good work that he's given you, right? By telling others, it's plural, isn't it? It's plural. I finish the good work. He didn't just say, uh, my life is worth nothing unless I do the good work. What did he say? My, work, my life is worth nothing unless I finish the work, right? All the way to the end. It, it's that same picture that Paul is painting for you right here this morning. That from the moment I got there until now, I kept doing it over and over. I didn't stop. Even when it was hard, I never stopped. That's why, that's why he tells his protege, Timothy, preach the word in season and out. Whether the time is favorable or not. Preach the word. Don't stop, right? People don't want to hear it. I don't like to preach it. I knew what I was about to tell you this morning. This thing, I was like, oh, they're going to be so psyched that I'm back here. I'm telling them that they all are horrible and they don't do a good job. Awesome. Welcome back. Like, I knew that. Like, do you think I really want to do this? I love you, so I'm telling you the truth. So that is like, maybe I need to change my perspective. But, but it's not fun to go tell the only people that showed up this morning that you're not doing a good job. can praise it all you want but it's not easy to do and it's not fun to do right so in season now you you have to do this because if i don't my life is worth nothing unless i do this and here's the thing okay that's all fine and good but you got to get this he said my life is worth nothing unless i finish the work that jesus assigned me do y'all you saw it right and the most important part of that is that he is a, Jesus Christ has assigned the exact same work to each and every one of you in this room today. You're not off the hook because you're not the great apostle chip. It's not you're the great apostle Amara. Every single one of you has been given the task he assigned you a task 
When you said yes to him and bent the knee to him, he gave you his Holy Spirit, and that's the title of our message. When you get that Holy Spirit, his power will be upon you, and you will be my witnesses to the ends of the earth. Did he say you can be or you might be? What did he say? Say it again. You will be. All authority in heaven and earth is mine. So go make disciples. Baptize them. Teach them all that I've taught you. How many people have been saved for more than a year? Then you know a lot compared to the guy who just got saved that week. You know a lot. So you can, you're in position now to be obedient. More than you were that day. If knowledge means more qualified, you're more qualified today than you were that day. And how do you teach them everything that I've taught you? If you don't know anything, it's kind of tough. But now you know some stuff, right? So get out there. Why are you still sitting there? Get out of here and go tell somebody, right? That would be a great way to end it. Go tell somebody. You know what? This is crazy. I'm done. And so is church. Leave. Go tell somebody about Jesus. I'm serious. Go tell somebody about Jesus. I'm being obedient. Go tell somebody about Jesus. Come on. Why are you sitting there? Go tell somebody about Jesus. Go find somebody and go tell somebody about Jesus. Get out of your comfort zone. Don't worry about singing. Don't, who cares about an offering? Get out of here and go tell somebody about Jesus. Are you fired up? Yeah. Come on. Seriously. Go t- I, I'm not going to sit here and preach all day and then just say, have you tell me it was a great job? Seriously. Get your stuff. Go tell someone about Jesus. I know he's going to. You're gonna, he's definitely telling somebody about Jesus today. I can count on you, right? I know exactly who I am. Awesome. Go tell somebody about Jesus. Come on. Go tell somebody about Jesus. Go tell somebody about Jesus. For real. Come on. This is awesome. I love you. Go tell somebody about Jesus. Go tell somebody about Jesus. Come on. Hammer? You feel hammered? Go tell somebody about Jesus. I love you all. I love you all. I love you all. I had all kinds of stuff left over. Maybe we'll talk about it next week. I love you. I love you. I love you. You're loved by God. Go tell somebody before their 12 seconds is up. Okay? Have a great day. I love you.